Boy, that time just flies right by, doesn't it? Back in the action once again. Hope you had a fantastic holiday on Monday. But it's time to get back to work, though. We got work to do here tonight. It is that time of day after all. It's Tuesday evening. It is January 21st, 2020. My name is Joseph. And as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, if you're here for the first time, it's great to have you with me. I help traders find the best of the best trade setups using a very simple three-step strategy that we teach and trade together every morning in our trade room but my job's a little bit different tonight my job tonight is to help you find the best levels of support and resistance for tomorrow the best entry setups for tomorrow and most importantly my job is extremely important I'm gonna keep us out of trouble to avoid all those common traps for tomorrow that's Wednesday's trading session and we have quite a bit to cover in tonight's video look at the charts all prepped up as you can see we get some oil we get some S&P some Nasdaq and some gold we get a bunch of rain Ranges on the chart that makes me think to myself range bound markets breakouts should we trade them should we fade them we'll talk a lot about when to trade the breakouts when to fade the breakouts get a lot to talk about ranges here as we come back right after a holiday weekend we've also got some news coming out this week kind of an interesting week we got some big news later on this week but there's a couple missing things we'll talk about tonight on the economic calendar before we jump in though to the video tonight I just want to remind you especially if you're here for the first time make sure you subscribe Subscribe to our YouTube channel that way you never miss another great video newsletter and don't forget if you have any questions about anything we talk about tonight in the video that's what the comments section is for so get at us here in the comments right now if you have any questions about the strategy about the classes about anything we talk about tonight drop those questions in the comments section below and as always if you tune in every evening to join me on this newsletter hit that thumbs up button for me it always helps to expose this video to more traders every time you guys support this channel by leaving a comment subscribe to the channel and hit that thumbs up button if you guys tune in every evening but let's not waste any more time let's get this party rolling here we got some charts all ready to go but I'm gonna jump in first though to the economic news calendar here for tomorrow let's grab a look at the schedule here as we go into the rest of this week now remember Monday was a holiday and even though the markets were open on Monday technically speaking right it was a federal holiday here in the US, which means everything gets pushed back 24 hours. This is important for us because, for example, tomorrow is Wednesday. We usually have that weekly inventory report on Wednesday mornings. That's been pushed back till Thursday at 11 o'clock, which, by the way, I actually like it better at 11 o'clock on Thursday. We'll talk about that more in tomorrow night's newsletter. But as you can see, though, we have kind of a wide open space tomorrow. There really isn't a lot of news at the beginning of the trading session. We do, of course, right have the existing home sales number at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Now, I would imagine that's probably going to be the big market moving event for tomorrow, not just because it's the only major news on the schedule for tomorrow, but you may recall that last week we saw the new home sales number completely crush expectations, which is seen as a big, a big boon for the overall confidence of the consumers, at least in the United States. So we know that tomorrow people are going to be tuning in and placing their bets based on those existing home sales numbers, right? So we're paying attention to that tomorrow morning, bright and early as we go into that 10 o'clock top of the hour. Now, we also have a lot of other stuff going on out there. We got the impeachment trial happening in the Senate this week. Even though I don't anticipate that to have too much of an impact, you never know, right? You never know. When that stuff's involved, the markets pretty much ignored the uh, the impeachment in the House uh, about a month ago, and I would anticipate more of that coming for this week. This week and next week, we'll be hearing a little bit in the background about the impeachment stuff. I don't anticipate that to have too big of an influence on these markets. What I do expect, though, to be kind of like the uh, uh, kind of the the, the 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 known unknowns. We saw the first case 
of this virus coming out of Asia hitting U.S. Right, we got multiple multiple reports now uh, in the state of Washington, which is a little bit close to my place in Los Angeles. I'm a little bit scared about that. That is definitely something that I'm not sure people really appreciate how quickly that can take hold and how quickly that could affect these markets. Now, obviously, I'm not a I'm I'm, I'm not a, a, a biomed right trader, right? So we'll see how that impacts us. If I had to guess, though, I would guess the NASDAQ with the market, NASDAQ and gold, that will definitely be the two markets we want to pay attention to if we start seeing this kind of SARS-like virus they're kind of calling, uh, I can't recall the exact name for it, but we're going to be watching that closely as we go through the rest of the week this week. Hopefully, it hopefully it gets snuffed out just as fast as it popped up, but these types of things, though, when you're not looking, they do tend to grab hold, and that is a known unknown as you go through the rest of the week this week. We also have on Thursday, now it's not going to be on this calendar, but on Thursday we have that ECB announcement. That is probably going to be the biggest news of the week if you're in Asia or if you're in London. Now, normally the ECB isn't that big of a deal, but remember, we've got the, our, our friends in Germany are teetering on a technical recession. We've had some really good news followed by some really bad news coming out of the UK. So we definitely know there's a lot of stuff bubbling up. Every Everybody's watching the EU right now, and I would imagine that ECB announcement on Thursday morning is going to be on our radar for things like gold and euro later on this week. Remember, right, President Trump in the U.S. and, of course, uh, right, the head of the EU, they're now talking trade. So how the economy is holding up in Europe right now combined with, right, this kind of hardball strategy of the U.S. President Trump with trade, right, will it work with the EU? That is something we're watching here as we go into Thursday and Friday's trading session. So as you can see, there's a lot of known unknowns as we go. The issue coming out of Asia with this virus, right? We've got the ECB announcement on Thursday, the right, the, the EU economy. We'll see how that plays in. And then again, tomorrow, right? Like I mentioned tomorrow, no inventory report tomorrow, right? But make sure you are at your desk 945 till about 1045 tomorrow, because I do anticipate that's probably where we're going to see the biggest kind of biggest moves off of this news for tomorrow. And as always, like I say, every evening on this newsletter, Tomorrow and every morning, Monday through Friday, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, we'll be together in our trade room and we'll trade the strategy together. So make sure you come out and join me as a client tomorrow morning. So now you know we're watching for tomorrow. Now you know some, some of the themes we'll be talking about here as we go into the rest of the week. Now let's break into some charts here for tonight. I got some oil in the upper left, S&P and NASDAQ, and of course we'll wrap up tonight on that mighty yellow metal, the gold futures. I'm going to jump first though into the crude oil futures, and I'll tell you right now, these markets look really really just kind of out of balance. And balance would really be the word I would use to describe that because one of the things we're going to see a lot of as we go through these charts tonight, we're going to see a lot of ranges. And again, we'll talk about fading breakouts and trading breakouts. But a lot of what happened was we saw movement in Monday that then snapped back. And a lot of what's going on right now is the markets coming out of Monday. You'll notice a big down move coming out of that holiday. They got a lot of it back, right? And that's typical for that day after a holiday. Usually when the markets are open on a holiday, we open up the following day. The markets will, as I always say in my trade room, they'll kind of snap back, right? They'll try to go back to where they were on the holiday, right? You'll notice that's exactly what happened here, right? We got that big move down, that big push back, the market snapped back. And I feel like at this point on crude oil, we should now have given everybody a chance to get back in. And now we should be looking for the completion of that retest of that low. Let's not jump ahead of myself though, right? Markets are snapping back here. What do we know about oil right now? We know the bears have control, right? We know we've got that big down move, right? Anytime I see a big move like that, what do we expect? We expect to see another leg in the same direction. So anytime we see that much strength in one direction, 
I always try to make sure I'm finding ways to sell at resistance because we're bearish, right, down to retest that low. So everybody for the bears, the bears are trying to get back down to that 57.71. The buyers, of course, they want to go back up and retest those highs around 59.80. 80. So we know the bears have control. Strong bear move says to retest the low is the target. I think the big variable right now is this possible range that I have drawn in right in front of us here, right? Now, if you look closely at it, I can easily see we go up, we go down, we go up, we go down, we go up. That is a range. Now, what does a range tell me to do? Ranges tell me to buy low, tell me to sell high, right? A range tells me as we go up, I should try to sell it high. As we go down, I should try to buy it low. But here's the problem. Do I really feel confident being a buyer on this when I'm staring down the barrel of that big run? No, I definitely don't want to be a buyer. However, I'm anticipating that buyers will probably try it. And that's where I think I have the biggest edge for tomorrow's trading session. Looking at the chart here, anticipating this as a range. I'm anticipating that buyers are gonna to wanna to buy underneath it. I'm anticipating sellers are gonna to wanna to sell up above it, right? That's what should happen if that range settles in. And because we have that big bear move down and we know where the market's trying to go, I get a pretty good, I get a pretty good feeling about just simply waiting for these buyers to try to buy it and then just simply selling right into those stop losses for a target down at that low. So here's what, right, here's what I would anticipate here for tomorrow. We know where we're trying to go. Now I've got to let those buyers get in trouble. You know, that's a lot of what we do in our trade room. We anticipate where traders may be misreading the market and we literally look to capitalize by trading to their stops, by going with momentum, looking for counter trend traders. Now, what I want to do first is I want to think about if I was a buyer, what would I be trying to do? If I was a buyer, I would use that trend line. And what I would do is I would try to use what I call a two try failure pattern, right? And we talk a lot about these failure patterns on this, on this nightly newsletter. And basically if I was a buyer, what I would do is I would look for the market to go down to that trend line. I would look for the moving average to come over, look for sellers to try to sell off the moving average. And once I see those sellers trying to sell off the moving average, I would know exactly where their stops are and I could buy right into those stops. Now, that might happen tomorrow, right? We, we may get that reversal off of that low, or as I call it, a failure pattern, right? In this case, it'd be a seller failure below the low of that trading range. But, but, but again, right, w w with this situation though, we don't have a clear bull market right now. All of that bearishness going lower, Right? I just don't think, I don't think after seeing them snap back, remember a lot of times the day after a holiday, the markets will kind of come back to where they left off and then proceed to finish off that move. They got their snap back, kind of my way of describing it, right? They kind of snap back. Now we should be able to get this move going lower. So how do I structure this trade? What I'd like to do is, is wait for these buyers to come in and try to grab that failure. And what I'm gonna do is, is look to see if I can grab a trap high right above those highs. It's basically a failed failure, right? That's what it is, it's a failed failure. Now, if you're a client of mine, we have a, a name for this. What is it called? It's called a two try trap pattern, right? A two try trap pattern. In other words, we wait for those bears to try once, we wait for them to try twice, right? Oh, sorry, wait for the bulls to try once, bulls to try twice, and we sell it there with a trap high. So I'm gonna ignore the failure for the buy side, and I'm gonna look to be a short seller above the top of that trap high between those two, right, those two legs lower. Again, it's called a two try trap pattern. And again, my target is, is down at that low. Now, what if I don't get that entry pattern there? Okay, what if this thing continues, this kind of grind lower? What if it continues going lower? If it keeps going lower, for example, if we just keep running lower, I have no problem looking for that pattern lower as long as we get it before we retest that low at 71, okay? What's the best plan if we get the retest? If we get the retest, remember now, they've squeezed most of the juice out of this move. 
at that point now, I've got to wait for a profit-taking rally, wait for buyers to come in and try to buy a pullback so I can sell into their stops as we go back down again. Okay, so there's three scenarios I'm watching for right now. One is that two-try trap setup, which I really hope we get because that will give me a nice risk-reward ratio on the way down to that low. If it keeps running lower, it's a one-two trap high. Again, before we get there, that's the caveat. If we get to the low, though, now they've already got what they came for. Now we'd expect to see some profit taking, right? A bounce off that low. Once I get profit taking, I look for those counter trend traders to come in and try to call that bottom, right? A lot of times that bottom will try and fail, and I'll be able to sell it right back down in with a simple buyer failure setup. Now, those are the options I'm looking for as the market goes lower. There's one thing though, like I said earlier, and that is this range. Okay, so let's say for example, the range really settles in here right now. This is something we definitely wanna be aware of for tomorrow. The one thing that we have to watch out for is, what if we get stuck inside this range? What if we don't go anywhere and we sit here? You know, tomorrow's a Wednesday. Even though there's no inventory news, maybe people are maybe people think there is and they get spooked. I don't know. Maybe we go sideways here. If we go sideways here for a couple hours overnight, that's going to really do a lot to absorb a lot of this momentum. If that's the case, I want to make sure I'm selling high. My favorite pattern to sell high is what I call a two-try failure pattern. I simply wait for the market to go higher. I wait for buyers to try to buy the pullback, and I simply sell into those stop losses. Now, how do I buy off the low, though? This is a tricky part, right? How do we buy off the low? Remember, we still have that big bear move down. So as we go sideways here, remember, that's the most important thing. At this point, if we start going sideways on this now, now we're balanced. If we get that run lower, again, I'm still looking for that same two-try trap. But one more thing I'm watching for here, though, is if we don't get that strong move lower, if we sit off that trend line, I'm watching for bears trying once, I'm watching for bears trying twice, and I'm looking for a very specific pattern here, which I call a crown reversal. Now, crown reversals, you'll learn a whole lot more about those in our video course, which reminds me, if you're here for the first time right now, I have a great free trading course for you that will give you a deep dive into all of these patterns. I'll put a link in the upper right-hand corner there for you, right? So grab that link. By the way, I'll put all the links I'm talking about in the description of this YouTube video. So make sure you dig into that description and grab the links there. But again, grab that pop-up in the upper right-hand corner and you'll see hundreds of examples of how we apply all of these patterns to our favorite markets. Okay, so now we know the plan for the range, right? If we sit sideways, we're going up, buyer failure, okay, above the high of that range, or as we go lower, it's a crown reversal. And the reason why I wanna buy with a crown reversal is because that's the most reliable pattern to avoid, right, buying basically into that bearish trend. Now, I know what you're thinking. At what point can we start to buy this thing as it goes higher? As soon as we see some proof, these buyers can take it. What's proof look like? Here's one, here's one way I can get proof. One, one, one way would be, would be a one, two, three breakout, right? So we're anticipating the range. At what point can I trade the breakout? I want to see a strong move up. That will set the table now for the buyers to hold the pullback. And if they can hold the pullback, I'll use that one, two, three reversal or one, two, three breakout. I'll mark up the high, mark up the high, find my hidden channel, and we're buying off the low of that hidden channel. So at what point can I trade the breakout? After I see a one, two, three, and proof of that reversal. Excuse me. Now, another pattern I'm watching right? That's the one, two, three breakout. Another pattern I'm watching, draw that trend line. Okay. That trend line's a great clue because if we see this thing rally higher here, okay, up into that trend line, a lot of times what'll happen is you'll see some profit taking. You'll see a pull back, right? You'll see, you'll see it go right, profit taking goes higher. Bears will try. And at that point now, if I can get those bears to try once, try twice to sell off that trend line, you know what, you know what's going to happen? 
those stops are sitting right above that high, looking for a nice strong signal, and I can buy right into those stop losses. I call this a two try breakout pattern. So again, there's two possible breakouts here. One is a one, two, three breakout, mark the high, mark the hidden channel, right, and buy the low of that channel. Or again, strong move up, profit taking pullback, higher high, bears coming in to sell it now. Now the bears have their stops sitting right above that high, all I need now is that nice strong signal candle and we're off for the races. Again, buyers want to go back up and retest the major highs. Sellers want to go down to retest those lows. What are we going to get tomorrow? I don't know, but right now the bears have my attention. I'm hoping we get that two try breakout pattern, that two try trap pattern as we go lower here. If you're in Asia, definitely keep your eyes on that here in the overnight. And again, as I mentioned earlier, if you want a deeper dive into all of these patterns, make sure you grab that free course and everything I talk about tonight is linked up in the description of this YouTube video. Let's keep going though. I got a lot more to talk about here tonight. How about some S&P? The S&P and the NASDAQ are both very similar. They are a little bit more challenging because of one thing. Well, I guess two things. One is the range and two is momentum. Now, first of all, what do we know about the S&P? We know we have the bulls with a nice strong run up, right? More importantly, it's a strong move up into a trading range. Now, what does that tell me? It tells me the bulls have the edge right now, right, going into the range. What does the range tell me? Ranges are balanced. Ranges tell me to buy low. They tell me to sell high. And they tell me to what? Avoid the middle, right? So buy low, sell high, and avoid the middle. Okay, what else do we see on this chart? There's the big elephant in the room, isn't there? Yeah, this bad boy, right? That big move down. Now, what do we expect when we see a strong move in one direction? We expect to see a retest of the low and probably, in this case, a measured move. Now, put those two together. Here we have a bull market into a trading range. That tells me I want to buy low and sell high. So we go up, right? We sell it high, back down. But look at this strength move going lower. That strength going lower tells me don't be surprised if we see a shot going back down again that then later on in the session gets pulled back up into that range. So you can see, right, the bullishness of the range tells me to be a buyer at the lows, right? Buy down around these lows. But the big elephant in the room, right, literally, is this big push down. That tells me don't get too aggressive. Let them get that second leg. And if anything, right, it'll be a great spot to be a buyer now down at some key levels of support. So we're looking really good on that. Now, it's, I think it's going to be a lot easier said than done, though. I want to be a buyer underneath it. But with all this bearish momentum, what do you think is the best way for me to buy when I'm a little bit worried about momentum. Well, let's talk about this for a second here. Let's zoom in on this chart a little bit here, right? Get my work all saved up there. Now, if I go lower here, is that market gonna feel bullish or will it feel bearish? It's gonna feel pretty bearish. And as we go lower, do, do you think the sellers are gonna give up without a fight? They're probably not gonna give up much of a fight, all right? If we didn't have this big move down, what I would do is I would just wait for those sellers to come in, try to sell that pullback, and I'd be a buyer right into those stop losses, right, right above that high and go back into that range. Okay, but that's not the case though. The case is we have this big, right, the big elephant in the room as I call it. If that takes us lower now, I probably should give the bears the benefit of the doubt, right? Which means instead of your typical failure pattern, I'm looking for a nested failure. One try and two try. And what I want to do here is, is you're literally letting the sellers dig their own grave with this. Pardon, you know, pardon the, 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 the term, right? You're letting them wrap that noose right around their neck, right? When the bears try once, when the bears try twice, most markets, they're only going to try twice. Human beings barely ever try things a third time. Think about it. It's human nature. It's human nature if you fail the first time. Yeah, I'll give it another try. But how many people do you know that really try three, four, five times? Probably the most successful people you know, to be honest with you, right? Most human beings that were not going to try three or four times, their attention spans are just not there, right? And they're not going to give it the effort. So once I see the bears try once and try twice, now I know, right? There is the, their, their exits 
are sitting right above that high, right? We're probably not going to get three or four attempts, right? So once I see those bears try twice, right, do I fade it or do I trade it? I fade it, right? As we go lower, I'm buying at support underneath the range, right? So what do we do? We fade that breakout. Now, as we go lower, at what point could I trade that breakout? Well, I would have to see proof. What would the proof look like? The proof would be a one strong move down, two pull back to the moving average, and three strong move off the EMA. Okay, that is the proof I need to trade it. Now, where do we do it? Do we sell down here? No, we definitely don't want to sell there because you're selling low. You're not selling at resistance. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark up that low. I'm going to draw a trend line off these lows. I'm going to bring it all the way up to that high and try to find that hidden channel. And now I've got my channel and I can sell off the top of that hidden channel high. I call this a one, two, three breakout into a hidden channel pullback. Okay, now that's the most conservative. Another way to do this would be if this thing rifles lower, we now look for profit taking once, lower low, right? Buyers come in. And what I'd like to do on this one is, is get that trap high, that two try trap pattern. And the reason for that is we have a lot of support down here, right? The measured move is there, the trend line is there, and we really don't have a lot of a lot of space. But if we go back and retest that low at 3307, which is exactly where those bears are going to want to be headed tomorrow morning, right? That'll be their target in the short term. So we know that if we do get a very strong move down, right? That will go right along with that momentum. Profit taking for the buyers once, right? Buyers come in trying to run it back up twice, trap high, and I can sell it back down from there. Remember though, this is all, this is the, 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 the kind of the prerequisite of this is it's got to be a very strong move down. That's the only way you're going to get enough sellers to come in and really Right, and really hit that sell button on that trap high. So that's where I want to I want to trade it, right? Instead of fade it. Now, as we go higher, this is where things get again. We're, we're still going to be a little bit uh, a little bit wonky on this, right? Because again, we've got this big move up. This is a bull market into a range. So if I go higher here, okay? If this was, by the way, if this was a bear market into a range, what I would do is I would look for the move up. I would look for that classic buyer failure pattern, let the buyers come in, try to buy the pullback, right? And I would sell it back down in, right? A buyer failure pattern selling above the high of that range. The problem we have with this is, is it's not a bear market. It's, a, it's an overall bull market. So as I go higher, what's the best way to sell in a bullish biased market? the same pattern we're going to use to be a buyer. I let them try once, I let them try twice, and then I can sell down from there. Again, what do we call it again? It's a failure pattern, but there's a failure inside the failure. That's why I call it a nested failure pattern. These nested failure patterns are my way of respecting momentum, but fading the breakouts, right? So when do we fade it? We fade it until we get what? Until we get what? until we get proof. Now, what's the proof look like? Either a one, two, three breakout, okay? And here's a good example back here. Notice that big, strong move up. Now, when I was a rookie, I would have said, boy, that's a real strong move. We've obviously broken out, but look what happened. They collapsed right back down in. What happened? They didn't hold the pullback, right? You've got to get a strong move up to set the table, but guys, you've got to hold that pullback if you want us to respect that breakout, right? So we can't, so when do we trade it? We trade it after we see that. One, set the table. Two, pull back. Three, jump off the moving average, right? Strong moves are not enough. Strong moves are not enough to break out of a range. So instead, we wait to trade it when we have proof. We mark up the high, mark up that new trend line down to those lows, find that hidden channel, right? And we're buying the pullback off the low of that hidden channel, a one, two, three breakout into hidden channel pullback. Or if we get that real strong move up, real strong now, now it's of course, right, a one try, a two try. Now keep in mind, we're at all time highs right now. So when I see those 
buyers take their profit and I see sellers now try to short this thing, I now know their stops are sitting right above that high, right? And I need those stops to be there because that's going to fuel this move as we make our run to new fresh all-time highs. Anytime I'm concerned about buying high, I like to incorporate a trap entry into that two try breakout pattern. Do we fade it or do we trade it? If we can see a strong breakout, we can trade it. How do you know it's a strong breakout? Because we make a run up, the bears try once, the bears try twice. Again, this is very, very different than just a strong move. Remember, I'm using the size of this range to find my sell zones and find my buy zones. If I just crush this thing going through those highs, great, one try, two try, trap, and a retest of that high, quickly move that stop to point of entry, lock out the risk, hold the runner, and see how far this baby will go. So now we've got a pretty good plan here to buy low, to sell high, we're doing a lot of nested failure patterns for tomorrow because momentum was kind of swinging back and forth. And again, like I mentioned before, look how the markets snap back, right? There's Monday. They get back to where they came from, right? A lot of times this happens when Monday is a holiday. Um, some examples of that, right? MLK Day was yesterday. Martin Luther King Jr. Day was yesterday, Monday. You got President's Day. Uh, what else do you have? Columbus Day. What else? There's a couple others out there. If you can think of a few other kind of half holidays, do me a favor. Drop them in the comment section below. And while you're down there, hit that thumbs up button for me. Hope you're enjoying this video newsletter right now. So again, anytime Monday is a holiday, but the markets are open. MLK, President's Day, Columbus Day. I'm missing one. I'm missing one. What is it? What is it? Who gets a star of the day today? Drop that in the comments section below. In the meantime, though, we're looking good there on the S&P, right? How about some NASDAQ? That's going to drive me nuts. What, what, what holiday I'm missing on that one? I'll get it. I will get it. Anyways, let's get back to our charts here. Over on the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ's going to be a little bit of a broken record. It is very similar here. So I'll go relatively quickly through this chart. What do we know? We know right now that the bulls have that momentum going into our range. Okay, what does bullish momentum into the range tell me? It tells me take the size of that range, use that to find my buy zones, use that to find my sell zones. And what do we do? We buy low, we sell high, right? We avoid the middle, right? Buy low, sell high, why? Because what is a range balanced? Okay, I also like to, as you can see, I love these expanding triangles. I draw trend lines off the highs, I draw trend lines off the lows, and there's no better entry and exit points when it comes to a range than using those triangles to fade those breakouts, right? When I say fade, what's fade mean, right? Do we fade it or do we trade it? To fade it means buy low, sell high, right? You're basically calling the bluff of those breakouts. Trade it basically means, right, you got the breakout and now it's time to trade it in that new direction. So that's the idea here. It's a bull market into a trading range, but you can see here, just like the S&P, there's a big elephant in the room and that is that big move down. Now, what's interesting on this NASDAQ is the fact that they really tried to get back to retest the high, but until they can get up there and take out those buyers, right, until they can get up there and knock out those sellers, the threat of that next leg lower is very real right now. So we don't want to get too aggressive being a buyer until we get that next leg lower or we get that proof of that run up to new fresh all-time highs. Now, what are we going to do with this, though? Remember, if we go lower, what's going to happen? This market will feel very bearish. Now, this is one of those times where even though we know the overall trend is bullish, we still know if we go lower, there's going to be a lot of people that will blindly think this market is bearish. So, you know, this, it's a good example where you can be right and still lose money. You've got to anticipate the other people in the market. That's exactly what I want to do with this. So as we go lower here, I'm anticipating that people are going to see this. They're going to think we're going back down to retest those lows, and they're probably not going to give up without a fight, right? They're going to probably try once. They'll probably try twice. And if I can get these bears to commit twice, again, most human beings and therefore most markets are not going to try four, five, six times. Once they try twice, stops get triggered pretty quickly, 
And those bears are not going to stick around to see what happens. They're going to bail on this, and the market will run right back up into that right in, 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 into that into that trading range. Now, what we oftentimes see on these on these nesteds. As we go lower, the moving average comes down, right? The bears try once, the bears try twice. What you want to keep an eye out for, I didn't talk about this earlier, but once we see those sellers trying a couple times now, right? We know where those stops are. Oftentimes, these things really shoot higher and you'll get a little trap entry just underneath that range. So that will be another way tomorrow to kind of either add to your position if you wanted to, or what I would do is, Take a quick first target, the one-to-one, -one, move that stop up, and add to the position on that trap low. This would be a failure pattern. And again, it's a nested failure because of the overall momentum being bearish. And then into a trap low because, as always, right, whenever I'm worried about buying high, what's my favorite pattern? Trap patterns. And again, like I said earlier, I'm just simply marking up these things, visualizing where I'll be looking for patterns tomorrow. If you're new here, make sure you grab that free course I mentioned earlier. Just pause the video, get registered, and that way you're ready to go, right? That way you can make the most out of our time together every evening on this video newsletter. Not to mention that free course includes hundreds of examples of how we apply these patterns to our favorite futures markets. Now, again, stay out of the middle. Right, stay out of the middle. Don't forget, if we sit here, if we sit here for a while, that will absorb a lot of this momentum, right? So be aware of that. How do we sell high? How do we sell in an overall bullish market? Very carefully, right? That's a bad joke. We wait for them to try once, try twice, and back down from there, right? That's the key. If we know the market's bullish, but we know we have a, a, a range, remember what is very likely is, what's likely is we go up, the buyers make a, a great run for it, right? But they try to keep it going and it falls flat in its face. I would much rather take the short back into the range than to try to, you know, thread the needle trying to trade it going long up here. So you want to fade that breakout. Now, when would you trade the breakout? There are two scenarios, right? One of them would be that one, two, three breakout. Again, remember, a strong move up is not enough to call a breakout. You got to hold the pullback. Just like down here, a strong move down is not enough. You've got to hold the pullback. And because I've seen these so many times, all I do is I wait for them to go lower. I wait for them to try to sell that pullback, right? I know the odds are pretty good it's going to fail, and we buy right back in. It's literally that simple. I then apply some simple momentum analysis to tell me what type of failure I want to go after. All right, we'll talk about that in our video classes. Now, as we go higher, one, two, three, breakout. Remember, got to hold the pull back to the moving average and jump. Mark that high, mark the trend line. Down to that low, bind the low of that channel. This is a very reliable pattern, but you got to wait for it, right? When do you trade the breakout? When you got proof. Now, sometimes the market just rips, right? You know, that's proof in itself. Again, we know where these sell zones are. Right, so I'm not trying to get into this stuff inside the sell zone, right? I wouldn't do it on this one, right? But if we see this thing completely rip through that sell zone overhead and rip higher here, what do we do? We wait for profit taking. When profit taking hits, what'll happen is the bears will come in. They'll be waiting to sell above that high. And again, because it is all time highs, I'm definitely looking for traps, right? Just my, that's, that's my way of being conservative as we try to go higher. I do want that trap. If you want to be more aggressive with it, you can look for just your straight one, two, knowing that stops are here. But as you can imagine though, that's going to be a whole lot more daring trade, right? You're buying relatively high. If I can get a trap low down here, that pretty much solidifies my risk reward ratio. Right? That's why traps are so important, especially when you're dealing with breakouts. Do I trade it or do I fade it? I trade this one as long as I can get that strong move up and that higher high. Right? You might be wondering, you know, how do you know the difference there? The difference is if it goes up and then creates lower highs, now that's the clue. Right? Those lower highs are the clue. But if I go up and I immediately pull back and see a higher high there, 
oh baby, put that put that swing right there and just w just wait for it. Everybody's gonna be piling on there, and who knows if we can get that that trend line to hold too. I mean, it's not necessary, but that will be even better as that continuation goes higher. Now, same thing goes for the sell side, right? Strong move down through the buy zone, profit taking trap and go right to try to try breakout pattern retest of that low is the objective one two three breakdown again we call this a hidden channel pullback after a one two three breakout right again that pattern will take long it will take a while to develop but it's worth it it's reliable it's dependable okay it's much better than trying to predict which one will hold will that hold or will that hold it's very difficult to tell and I don't want to hear about some momentum divergence or some special indicator, guys. We all know, right, indicators are not going to be as reliable as we need to be able to predict which will be breakouts and which will not be successful breakouts. Do I fade it or do I trade it? It all depends on do we have proof of that successful breakout. Let's keep going here. Now, over on the gold. Gold always loves to keep us on our toes. As I mentioned before, we do have the ECB announcement on Thursday morning. We're watching closely. We've seen some very mixed numbers, particularly out of Germany lately. They are really teetering on a recession right now. The reason why that's important is because we've got the U.S. President Trump playing hardball with the EU right now, trying to get some tariffs imposed. Remember, just a couple weeks ago, uh, France was threatening to impose uh, uh, tax on wine. Uh, there, 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 there was so there, there's this back and forth going on right now. I don't care who's right or wrong. I'm just telling you that right now there is some really bad news, economic news that we're seeing out of Europe right now. Meanwhile, they're trying to negotiate this trade deal, and with the ECB on Thursday, this is a powder keg. This could easily turn into something that really is explosive. If the ECB takes drastic measures just to be able to put themselves in a bargaining position, right, with this trade deal with, with, with the U.S., that's what I'm watching closely here right now. If the ECB does take action, gold obviously will pull higher, right? If the ECB decides they're going to cut rates, they're going to throw cash in the markets, right, like they always do, gold will respond. So gold is really a variable we're watching here over the next 24 to 48 hours. Now for tomorrow, what do we know about gold? We know the market is bullish. We can easily see this very strong, right? One, two, three reversal. This is a great example, right? Of a strong move up one and two with a trap low. You can easily see that pattern I talked about earlier. We call this a two try trap pattern, right? You can easily see that a mile away. So we know the buyers definitely have momentum on their side, but I think the biggest clue on this chart is that big bear move down into a trading range. What this looks to me is it looks like the bears got their shot lower at the opening bell in the U.S. They couldn't hold it into 10 o'clock. 9.30 is right there. So a 9.30 opening bell by 10 o'clock, they're right back up into that range again. Okay, now think about this again, right? This Again, like I said earlier, it's a little bit off balance. It's a bear market into a range. But now, I mean, how can, how can you look at that move right there and say, oh, we're bearish, right? Can't wait to sell. No, right? There's no way I want to sell this move right now. So we want to be a buyer, but we don't want to buy high. And we definitely don't want to be buying inside that range. This is where things are going to get a little bit hairy here on the gold. What does a range tell me? Range tells me balanced. It tells me sell high. It tells me buy low. It tells me avoid the middle, right? We know that. What else does this range tell me? I love those expanding triangles, right? You can almost kind of see that expanding triangle right now setting up as we go, right? That would be ideal. I would love to get a buy down here at the low of that expanding triangle. Because you can also see I'm lining up these highs. I put the midline right in the middle. That fits great. But the real key here, though, is, is that hidden channel there, right? We know we're bullish. We know we want to buy underneath the range. No better way to do that off the low of a hidden of, of, a, of a hidden channel, off a potential expanding triangle. That is just, I, I hope we get the pullback because that's a great spot right now for us to look for it. And this is one of those times where if I can get the pullback down underneath that range, if I can get those bears coming down in, at this point now, the bulls have the edge. So at this point now, all I need is to see those bears commit to it. 
I can then get relatively aggressive with a failure into pullback combination because now we're going right along with that overall momentum. Do you see how this one plays out? Right? I don't want to trade inside the range here again. So that's the only kind of rub, right? If we sit back inside the range, I'm going to sit on hands, wait for the move lower, wait for that seller failure pattern, and buy it back up again. We'll still keep trying to buy underneath that range. Or if we slice right through it, down to that trend line, down to the low of that hidden channel, wait for those bears to try to sell it or buying other stops. Usually what happens is it'll give you a little pullback there, right, for that failure into what we call a pullback, a pullback combination setup as we go higher there. Now, one more thing you want to keep your eyes on, obviously, if we sit inside the range here, be careful, be careful, be careful, stay out of the middle. How about if we keep going higher here? Because there is a chance that this is a spike in channel. Actually, it's this is the spike in channel, right? So there is a chance here this is a spike in channel, which, by the way, does lend more credibility to that deep pullback for the buy we're looking for. So the spike in channel really helps to really uh, further convince me of the legitimacy of buying that deep pullback. But let's say, for example, though, we don't get the pullback and the market keeps on running higher. If we do get that kind of sleepwalking move going higher, there's really not a lot we can do besides wait for a pullback, right? Now, at that point, this range will pretty much be put to sleep. What I'm looking for here is, is that deep pullback down into the base of that channel. Okay, this is very, very important, guys and gals. If we do keep grinding higher inside of a narrow channel here, it's called a spike in channel. Okay, the best place to buy a spike in channel is right down around the base of that channel. It'll be your straight seller failure into bullish pullback combination coming off of that low. Spike and channel patterns are very, very common. We have a lot of examples of spike and channel patterns inside that free trading course, as I mentioned earlier. And again, all the links I'm talking about tonight are included right in the description of this video. So now we know how to be a buyer on this thing as it goes higher. If it rips higher here, we know the bears are trying to get back to retest those highs. We know we don't want to buy highs. So what's the favorite pattern to avoid buying high? One try. A profit taking second try our sellers we call it again a two try trap and go two try breakout two try trap and go if this thing really does rip higher now how do we sell this thing how do we sell it one way to sell it would be we go back into the range we poke our heads up i use the nested failure once twice to sell back down Okay, that would be probably the easiest way to do it. You still have to wait, obviously, for that range to form. Or do we make a run lower? Okay, now there's always a chance because you got that big move down. But again, look closely here. We took out those bears. That's a big psychological, that's a big psychological spot right there. Okay, the S&P hasn't done it yet. The NASDAQ hasn't done it yet, right? None of the other markets, were they able to take out what I call the big elephant in the room? Right? Yes, there is a big move down there, but there's even bigger of a move back in the opposite direction. Make sense? It takes those bears out of the equation. Okay, so if we do make a run lower, what do I need to be a seller? I need proof because I'm going to fade that breakout until what? Until I see that one, that two, that three, that hold that pullback. Now, at this point now, I've got to be quick on the gun, but I don't want to be too quick. I want to sell high before I get down to that low. Okay, that's going to be, a, that That might be the hardest trade for tomorrow because you're literally threading the needle. You got to wait for proof and then get short at resistance before we get down to retest that low. What might be a little bit easier for us, to be honest with you, is if the market collapses down, we go back to retest the low, market sits inside a new range down here. Okay, that could easily happen for tomorrow if the market kind of sinks back down as we anticipate this ECB announcement on Thursday morning. If we get a range down here, look for the range. What do we do with a bear market with a range? We sell high with a buyer failure, right? Buyer failure pattern up above the top of that range, and we're selling it back down again. 
Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, these failure patterns, breakout patterns, again, I'm just simply drawing them up. I have a much deeper dive for all of these patterns in that free trading course. So make sure you grab that. That way you're educated and you can make the most out of our time together every evening on this newsletter. But let's not wait. Let's 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 not forget that really the biggest shortcut I can give you is coming out and joining me every morning in our trade room at eight o'clock Eastern time, Monday through Friday, we get together and we do it together because let's be honest, anybody can watch a video. Anybody can read a bunch of books on trading. What has taken me a long time is to learn how to properly apply this stuff to a moving market. We do it together every morning with all of our clients. I would love to see you there right there with me. The advanced course has all access to our video classes, right? All the great stuff in our beginner, intermediate and advanced courses. And as always, the advanced course includes lifetime access to our daily trade room every morning, Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. If you're on the YouTube channel right now, again, all the links are in the description of the YouTube video. If you're on the blog right now, there's a big blue button for you below me tonight on the trading blog. And of course, if you're on the website, grab the advanced course and don't be afraid to use that live support tool or call that toll free phone number. If you have any questions about flexible, easy payment options, right? Or any questions in between. And as always guys, if membership isn't quite right for you, please make sure you grab that free trial because part of that free trial includes our free trading course, hundreds of examples of how we apply our three-step strategy and, a, and, a, and an invite to attend our trade room on your free pass. So don't delay, get registered and done so already, but don't miss tomorrow morning's trading session, eight o'clock Eastern time, like clockwork. I wanna see you there with me. If not, come back and see us again on the next edition of this newsletter. Boy, I hope you guys had a great time with me tonight. Always appreciate you guys tuning in. Hit that thumbs up, drop those questions in the comments section, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss another one. And we'll see you guys same time, same place next time. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will ya? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.